Hi, Jim Bennett. And welcome. Welcome to this session of this part. I'm going to share some of my thoughts and insights on a topic called dynamic risk assessment. How to keep ourselves, our teams, our families, our community, our organization safe. And this morning, I have, have joined with the, a bundle of energy. Uh, my sister-in-law is in the uh, is in holiday at the moment, and her little dog called Poppy, a spaniel. Hello, Poppy. You want to say hello to our viewers? See, there we go. I, I started off my career in the uh, fire and rescue service. And the, the, the fire and rescue service, particularly protecting fire firefighters in the community, have something they call the rule of thumb. And for firefighting, when looking for any potential exposure, we talk about above, around, and below, looking for any potential fire spread coming from these areas. So that's one principle. Then the second important principle is that of energy, energy sources. When we talk about risk, we talk about hazards or energy sources times probability. So that's consequence times probability equals risk. And I'll explore that with you as we go through this morning walk and run with the, the bouncing poppy. Dynamic risk assessment is part of our integrated risk management system carried out by staff at the work phase. It dovetails into systematic work controls that includes, as we can see here, identification of the hazards or the energy sources, who can get injured, how. Then we do our assessment decide the control measures to bring risk to an acceptable level, and then record within our management systems. For further information, please see the signposts in the description below. Here we see a fine example of gravity in action. I mentioned to you there's a mnemonic that I have looking at energy sources. And a very simple uh, mnemonic, as I say, is big boys can get mashed not paying road tax early. So what does that mean in respect to energy sources? B stands for body movements, B, biological, C, chemical, the, get, the G is for gravity, B, mechanical, N is for noise, P is for pressure, R is for radiation, T is for thermal, hot or cold, and E is for electrical energy, electrical hazards. So let's walk and talk. As I'm walking along this uh, bank of a uh, reservoir or dam, there's a little, a little sign over here. Danger, deep silt. The reservoir, as we can see here in the background, the edges are rather uh, soft, so the hazards there are obviously gravity, the weight of a, an individual body, a dog, a child, an adult, sinking and basically drowning in deep, uh, deep, deep silt. This brings me to the, uh, the concept or topic. Um, within the Fire and Rescue Service, and many other blue light services, we talk about something called situational awareness, using all our senses, everything around us. What do we hear? 
see, feel, and smell. And particularly the, the little buoyant poppy that's here has this inherent smelling ability. There she goes, checking, looking. So it's using all our senses, using our sixth sense to a certain extent, our intuition. Every day we are bombarded with data sets. Basically millions of uh, information coming in. And then suddenly, bang! Something's not quite right. There's something I don't recognize. It's our senses that are coming uh, into action. And from there we determine it's like, oh, oh what is it? So if I'm not sure, I go and check. That's a bit of a dynamic risk assessment. I'm sure that many of you are, are drivers, drivers of vehicles, be it say, bicycles, cars, motorbikes, whatever it is. There's something in advanced driving techniques which talks about far, near, here, and rear. So far, we're looking at distance to, as far as we can see here, the horizon. We see right towards the end of the road there, um, a little bit of lightness coming through. Near, middle distance, tree over there, and here. What is it directly in front of us? And then rear, what is it behind us? Dynamic risk assessment, as we are doing just now. We're constantly moving, checking. Has anything changed? I worked, or in fact, I still work in the, the energy sector, the oil and gas sector. Um, blue light services, a energy sector, do something formally called dynamic risk assessments that forms part of the permit to work system. The permit to work system is when we've got, got high, high hazards, a uh, higher probability of someone being injured or damaged to our environment. We have a structured format of looking at any task or work activity that we're carrying out. And part of that, more recently, we do something called dynamic risk assessment. And that's looking at work and putting it into phases or stages. So I'm walking along the road here with the dog and I'm saying, OK, you'll probably notice dog is off the lead at the moment. Uh, located here is the lead. So we're free. Um, very few vehicles coming through here. We have a service vehicle that comes through maybe two, three, three times a day. So it's a pretty safe. So when I, prior to entering this area, my preparation is having the, the dog under control. She's under control pretty well, actually. Responds well to commands of coming here. Um, but just to be on the safe side, I put a safety belt on her. Uh, as part of our personal protective equipment. So when we look at, look at risk, we look at different means of controlling risks. And we, we have something we call the hierarchy of control. And that starts off at the very top, that the greatest risk reduction or energy reduction that we have is elimination. Do we need to actually do it in the first place? Substitution. Can we do something safer? If it's, for example, hazardous chemicals, can we use something that's a bit more friendly, it's less, less a hazard to us? So that is elimination, substitution, engineering controls. Can we put a barrier? Can we put something between us and the energy source coming to hit us? The next thing after that is administration controls. Can we limit the length of time we have exposure to this particular uh, risk or uh, hazard effect. Okay, so the risk is hazard effect times probability equals 
risk. Administration, limit our exposure to it. Next level down from that, as I mentioned before with Poppy, personal protective equipment. Personal protective equipment for the dog is the lead, for example. If it happens to be going in areas where uh, there's glass or rocks or things like that, we can look about putting something for foot protection. So look at, at, at things like that. PPE, respiratory protection, eye protection. The thing to remember with there is it's protection. It's not elimination. The energy source is still there. If it comes, it can hurt you. So. That is part of it, hierarchy of control. And today it's, it's very pleasant, uh, it's a lovely morning. And uh, in Scotland recently it's not been so, uh, no, not been as bright as this. It's been very wet and very, very windy. It's been extremely stormy. However, I see in the distance we've got some more uh, hazards, hazard effects. And probabilities coming up. I'll show you now. We have a little digger in operation at the moment. So let's stand back just from a little distance here. And if I look uh, to the right in front of us here, so we have a, uh, the risk of gravity and falling and drowning within the water, within the dam that's been pumped out at the moment. We've got guys working here in the digger. So it's working in the edge coming down there. One of the reasons they need to be very careful there, again, is gravity of it tipping and falling um, down the bank and capsizing, really, and potentially seriously injuring our, the uh, joining the, uh, the drivers. So. so this is guys doing repair work, inspection and maintenance repair of this railway bridge. We have the energy sources or hazards of gravity uh, working at height. We have overhead electrical uh, railway lines and we have repair work using chemicals as well and drilling into the brickwork. The repair work on the railway bridge is by drilling, abseiling and drilling and putting rods into structure to help strengthen it and they're located with some form of resin to help strengthen the, uh, the structure. And here we have a warning notice of the hazards, the hazards associated with reservoirs, and the type of things that we need to be aware of. In summary, dynamic risk assessment is about situational awareness. We mentioned the Fire and Rescue Service, the rule of thumb, above, around and below. We mentioned a little bit about advanced driving techniques. Far, near, here and rear. Far, horizon, near, middle distance, here in front of us, and rear, what's happening behind us. We think about planning but the life cycle of a job. Plan, do, measure, learn. We do our activity set, whatever we're doing in stages. Preparation. We get all our kit and equipment ready. We check the site, location we're working. What are the potential energy sources there? What's the probability of causing harm? How often can it happen? So that's energy sources of hazards. That again, there's a big boys can get mashed, not paying road tax early. Okay. So biological, body movements, chemical, 
gravity, mechanical movement, noise, radiation, thermal, and the E is electricity. We think about forms of controls, elimination, substitution, engineering controls, administration, and the final uh, method of protection is personal protective, PPE, personal protective equipment. We do our, our activity in stages, the preparation, start the activity, every so often any change of activity or stage that we're doing, again a quick check, some people to say take five, but that it's, it's take five, five minutes, just check, anything changed, do we need to modify our controls or be aware of anything, if so do it, if not continue to the next stage. The final thing with all activities is leaving the, the work site, the area we're working, back to the place it was, leave it in a safe place. That's it for this episode. If you've found any, any new insights, please uh, click the like button below. If there's anything you would like further clarification on, please write it down. A thing that underpins a lot of this is uh, another area I'll talk about in more depth later, is the topic of human and organisational factors. But for the moment, goodbye.